Welcome to um, Morning Prayer on Tuesday, the 12th of November. It's good to have you with me um, whenever and wherever you're watching this. Um, I know that some people watch it, uh, watch, watch more or less kind of live, as it were, um, in the mornings and others later on in the day. And I know that some people join us from um, further afield. Um, but it's good to have you with me. Um, and... Um, Although we're in the season of All Saints Day until um, Advent, um, we're not remembering, commemorating anyone in particular today in terms of Saints Days. Um, but we are praying for um, pupil chaplaincy gathering um, together at Taunton Minster. Um, so we pray for children serving in their primary schools. Um, and in our schools, of course, we're very lucky to have um, worship champions um, who um, pupils um, from all years, actually, who help out, um, help out with the collective worship, um, but also um, all things to do with the Christian ethos of our schools. So um, we've, we'll be very pleased to pray for them. We'll be offering Psalm 21 and we'll be hearing the next chapter, chapter six from the book of Revelation. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so to Psalm 21. The king shall rejoice in your strength, O Lord, how greatly shall he rejoice in your salvation. You have given him his heart's desire and have not denied the request of his lips. Will you come to meet him with blessings of goodness and set a crown of pure gold upon his head? He asked of you life and you gave it him, length of days forever and ever. His honour is great because of your salvation. Glory and majesty have you laid upon him. You have granted him everlasting felicity and will make him glad with joy in your presence. The king puts his trust in the Lord. Because of the loving kindness of the Most High, he shall not be overthrown. Your hand shall mark down all your enemies. Your right hand will find out those who hate you. You will make them like a fiery oven in the time of your wrath. The Lord will swallow them up in his anger and the fire will consume them. Their fruit you will root out of the land and their seed from among its inhabitants because they intend evil against you and devise wicked schemes which they cannot perform. You will put them to flight when you aim your bow at their faces. Be exalted, O Lord, in your own might. We will make music and sing of your power. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So to Revelation chapter six. Then I saw the lamb open one of the seven seals and I heard one of the four living creatures call out as with a voice of thunder. Come. I looked and there was a white horse. Its rider had a bow. A crown was given to him and he came out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature called out, call out. Come. And out came another horse, bright red. Its rider was permitted to take peace from the earth, so that people would slaughter one another, and he was given a great sword. When he opened the third seal, I heard the li third living creature call out, Come. 
I looked and there was a black horse. Its rider held a pair of scales in his hand and I heard what seemed to be a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a day's pay and three quarts of barley for a day's pay, but do not damage the olive oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature call out, come. I looked and there was a pale green horse. Its rider's name was Death, and Hades followed with him. They were given authority over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, famine and pestilence, and by the wild animals of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered for the word of God and for the testimony they had given. They cried out with a loud voice, Sovereign God, holy and true, how long will it be before you judge and avenge our blood on the inhabitants of the earth? They were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer, until the number would be complete, both of their fellow servants and of their brothers and sisters, who were soon to be killed as they themselves had been killed. When he opened the sixth seal, I looked, and there came a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth, and the full moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree drops its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. The sky vanished like a scroll rolling itself up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, and the magnates, and the generals, and the rich, and the powerful, and everyone, slave and free, hid in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Well, with those uh, awesome words of, uh, of prophecy, uh, we turn to our prayers of intercession. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. Thank you for John's vision recorded here in the book of Revelation. With its vivid and huge symbolism, difficult to uh, access and understand. Lord, looking ahead to the end times, of course, we do know that it's going to be a, an amazing and fearful time. Lord, we thank you that we can put our confidence in you through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and through our faith in him. We know that our destiny is secure with you. Lord, we do thank you during this time of all saints for those who have gone before those who've given their lives for their faith many people, many of them known, many of them, of course, unknown and known only to God. Lord, we thank you for each and every one of them. We pray still today for those who continue to worship and witness in difficult places throughout the world, those who suffer persecution, those for whom simply being a Christian is dangerous. So Lord, we do pray for your protection upon them, that you would give them courage and strength. Lord, we pray too for ourselves here where we are, whilst we're mercifully free from immediate danger. Lord, we pray that you would give us the courage of our own faith, the conviction to be bold in our witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're asked today to pray for the school chaplaincy event taking place at Taunton Minster. So, Lord, we thank you for all those involved and we thank you within our own schools here at Staplegrove and Norton for our chaplains, uh, or indeed they're not called chaplains, but our, pu our worship champions. 
those pupils who are involved with the Christian ethos within the school, supporting collective worship, monitoring our assemblies, helping to prepare and consider different things. We thank you for their energy and their enthusiasm. We thank you for the work done by Jenny and Anna and Emily and others in supporting them. Lord, we thank you for Rosemary and for Sandy, our uh, respective governors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're asked to pray today for those who are in fear of the winter months. So, Lord, as uh, the weather begins to turn still further, with talk uh, next week perhaps of a cold snap, so we realise that there are people among us who are really fearful of that. Those perhaps who are unable to uh, heat and feed themselves for whatever reason. And Lord, we pray especially for those who can't afford to heat their homes, to feed themselves. So Lord, we give you thanks for the organisations that are available to support, safe spaces, food banks and Open Door and more, the Food Hub at Norton. And Lord, we pray that you would open our eyes and hearts as church and as a community to recognise need around us and to address that need. We do pray for our government and local leaders to be alive and alert to the needy and the vulnerable and to respond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we're asked today to pray for uh, all sovereigns and political leaders, that they may imitate the righteous rule of Christ. So, Lord, we do pray for those who lead us, for our Prime Minister, the leaders of all the countries in the world. And Lord, having just celebrate, uh, um, commemorated Remembrance Sunday, so we pray once again for peace. particularly in those areas of the world where violence is at its worst, in the Ukraine and Russia conflict and Israel, Gaza, Lebanon and other places. Lord, we pray that leaders would indeed be inspired by the rule of Christ, the Prince of Peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we pray for uh, political leaders and sovereigns, so we pray for church leaders at this time. Giving you thanks for our own bishop, Bishop Michael in the diocese, supported by the Archdeacons, our Archdeacon Simon here in Taunton. Lord, we do pray for our Archbishops at this time, particularly in the current uh, pressure being placed upon Archbishop Justin. Lord, we do pray for your will to be done. Most of all, Lord, we pray uh, especially for those uh, many victims caught up by abuse over the years, those who have been affected and still are. Lord, we do pray that your grace and mercy would be with them, that they would, each and every one of them, find the support and the help that they need. And Lord, we pray that you would guide your church 
to be a safe place. And we thank you for our own safeguarding officer here, Sandy, and for the work that she's done, huge amount of work that she's done. And we pray for the safeguarding team in our own diocese. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, including among them Nigel and Shirley, Ivy and Gerald, Martin and Alison and Daniel and Hannah, Lord, we pray for those who grieve, including the friends and family of Pat uh, or Kate Whittle, whose funeral and thanksgiving services took place yesterday. And Lord, we pray too for the friends and families of Barbara Slocum and of Paul Jenkins and of Joyce Trot and of Anne Reeford. Lord, we ask that you would give them the strength that they need at this time and the support from loved ones around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, as we pray for the day ahead of us today, so uh, we pray for our Evergreens group meeting this afternoon to 45 at Staple Grove Church and enjoying uh, a talk from Vicky Pugh, daughter of um, the late Jim Booth, uh, about his um, work and particularly um, his service uh, during the Second World War um, and his life. So uh, we pray, Lord, that that would go well and we do thank you for our Evergreens group and the fellowship and hospitality that it offers to so many people. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good to have you with me and uh, have a good day.